Hey everyone, Nick Diabertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be solving the second lab exercise on relaxing the static desired cash assumption in the dynamic salary retirement model in Excel. So uh, this is the lab exercise that I'm talking about here in the third uh, set of slides on the depth of a financial model uh, focusing on Excel. And the idea here is that we want to uh, have a better assumption about how much cash this person needs to retire. Because right now, uh, you know, we just put in a fixed number, you know, for example, we put $1.5 million as how much this individual needs to be able to retire. But uh, that was just a number that we threw in there. Like it wasn't actually based off of any kind of analysis of how much they would really need. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and build that in. Uh, so instead of having desired cash as an input to the model, it's going to become an output. And it's going to be an output based on a few new inputs. Um, how much this person is going to spend during retirement and how long do they expect to be in retirement. They're basically life expectancy in retirement. Um, so let's go ahead and add that into the Excel model. And you know, the idea being here that we don't want to have to rework a lot of the Excel model. Uh, we want to try and do this in a way that we can basically leave everything that's there intact and just kind of add on this additional part. Let's look at how we can do that. So we'll work off of this existing dynamic salary retirement model uh, that you can download from the uh, course website. And, uh, you know, we already have this set up uh, with all the inputs and determining the retirement over here on this uh, sheet based off of the static desired cash, which is just referenced from the inputs. Um, so now this desired cash is going to be an output rather than an input. So a nice uh, first step that we can do is move it over to the outputs. Uh, so first I'm going to uh, insert a row here um, to make some space uh, for the um, desired cache. And I'm not going to worry about the formatting for now, um, though you would definitely want to clean this up. Um, but I'm going to move this over to here. And you'll notice nothing broke uh, when I moved this, and that's because I cut it. So that would be Control X or Command X if you're on a Mac, and then pasting it over here. What that does is it actually uh, will move any references to that cell. Um, so if you look over here on the uh, Retirement tab, now it's looking at B18 for the desired cache, which is our new location and not the old one. So that's really uh, key to being able to move things around an Excel model without breaking everything is you want to cut and not just uh, you know copy or manually try to move things over. Um, so then the um, other thing we want to do before we start doing the calculations is add these new inputs. Um, so this would be the annual spend in retirement uh, is one. Um, and then the um, you know time in retirement uh, would be the other. Um, and what do we say here for defaults for those values? 20, 40 thousand and 25 years. And of course you would uh, oh this is coming as percentage to make sure if this happens that you, uh, take it off a percentage and then retype it. Otherwise, it's going to be, uh, you know, one one hundredth of what you actually wanted. Um, so here now we have the new inputs and we can go ahead and set things up for the calculation. So, uh, you know, I would consider this, uh, you know, part of the retirement part of the model is determining this. Uh, you know, you certainly could feel free to break this into another subsection, another uh, worksheet within the model, uh, completely separate. But I'm just going to add it to the retirement one because I think it makes sense in there logically. Um, <clears throat> so on this retirement tab, uh, again, right now we have desired cash in the input section and we don't have those other inputs coming in here yet. 
Um, so let's add another row to make space. And then uh, I'm going to um, have another table over here, which would be the uh, you know desired cache calculations. Um, and so uh, here, then I'm going to bring the uh, desired cache over to here as well. Once again, cutting uh, Control X, Command X uh, to ensure that all the references stay intact. So all these um, or all these is retired are based off of this value, which uh, the references did get updated, and nothing has changed in the model. Then we need to bring over our new inputs. Um, so I'm going to grab the annual spend in retirement and the uh, time in retirement now coming over to here and so now we can go ahead and actually do this calculation uh, and because we've kept all the references intact as we've gone through now once we change this to being a calculated value everything is just going to still work as it did before just now having this be calculated um, so now <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the desired cache. Um, we're going to um, take the present value to determine that um, because it's, you know, at, we think of the day that they go into retirement as, you know, day zero in this calculation, and we're figuring out how much money do we need at the beginning of retirement to be able to, you know, make these payments to yourself uh, for your spending during retirement. Um, Oh, and we need, we do need one other uh, input coming over here, which is the um, interest rate. So I'm going to grab that as well. Um, and so then this is going to be the present value, and it's going to be with that interest rate. Um, and the number of periods is going to be how long we need to spend in retirement. Um, and the payment is going to be negative of the spending that we have to um, have each year in retirement. And then, you know, by the time we, uh, you know, die at the end, uh, we don't need any money left over. And so we're going to put a zero uh, for future value. Certainly, if you wanted to expand the model to have an inheritance component where you want to have at least a certain amount left for your heirs as an inheritance, then uh, that would be another input, and you would use that as the future value here. But here we're just assuming uh, you don't need to pass on any money, and so you have zero left at the end. And so then we can calculate the desired cash. Um, so based off of, you know, if really we only needed 40000 per year and we expected to live 25 years, really we didn't need as nearly as much cash as we thought we did uh going into retirement and so that means that now we're retiring a lot earlier um in 18 years and the last step here would just be to bring that output back over to uh the overview page of the model the inputs and outputs page so we would just reference that back over to the retirement tab um, so now we have that here as well um, so that way you know if we say we're going to live longer um, then that can um, update the desired cash, uh, which is going to update the years to retirement. Same thing if you need to spend more, uh, that's going to update again the desired cash, which will uh, update how long it's going to take to retire. So everything is linked together. So that's uh, this lab exercise. So thanks for listening and see you next time.